Hey, welcome back. Okay, so our next guest is a very talented comedian. He was the winner of the 2009 Great American Comedy Festival, and he lives right here in Seattle. And tonight he is performing at the Tacoma Comedy Club. But first, he is joining us right here on Studio 13 Live. We say hello to Kermit Apia. Welcome, welcome. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. And you know what's exciting? I uh, uh, got my wife a stolen cookie for Valentine's oh, Day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it says Maria on it, but I'm still... <laughs> She'll love it. Yeah, she won't so know. very nice. <laughs> so you were actually born in Hawaii, but you moved to Seattle to go to UW. Tell me about that. I was born and raised in Hawaii and just, you know, got sick of the sun every day and rainbows <laughs> and palm trees, icky. Uh, no, I came to the University of Washington, started doing comedy, and when you first start doing comedy, nobody's flying you anywhere, so I had right. to be someplace where I could drive to gigs. So, <laughs> so I, I stayed here and wound up falling in love with Seattle. Oh my gosh, that's, that's cool. awesome. Yeah. Well, we have to talk about your amazing name. I'm yeah. always saying, like, the things that you probably get made fun of when you're a kid are the things that make you so unique and special when you're older. So I love that your name is Kermit. And What's the story? It's why I'm sitting right here today. Because, yeah. because when I was a kid, uh, I grew up in uh, a little a little more dangerous part of Hawaii that you don't see in the brochures. Yeah. And so even though I was a, a taller kid, I wasn't big by any means. And you realize that... Uh, uh, getting into fights was uh, a lot harder than making fun of yourself first. And so, yeah. so I started making jokes about myself, and that sort of disarmed everybody, and uh, and and you know, and, and developed my sense of humor. I love that. Yeah. That is yeah. so amazing. What is it like for you to perform so near to where you live? I mean, does it make you panicky? Or do you uh, love it? Well, I travel a lot. I, yeah. I travel all over the place. And, and, and yes, it is, it is kind of weird when you see people who have seen you before just because yeah. you're wondering, boy, how much new stuff do I have since you saw me <laughs> last? Like they'll be reciting it with you. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, I, I love performing here just because it's where I started. Yeah. You know, you started in Seattle, so a lot of my stuff builds around the sense of humor here. So. How long have you been doing comedy? Uh, I've been doing it. Uh, I think I quit my day job in May of 91. Oh, my God. I was, I was 23 years old, and I thought, I'm just going to do this. This is going to be like my backpacking through Europe that young people do. Yeah. And then at 25, I was going to grow up, and, and I'll always have that story that I was a comedian. And it just <gasps> it, it didn't end. It How did you know on. when it was time to quit your job and like go all in on comedy? Uh, w when when they were offering money, yeah. Because <laughs> you know, because so so the first couple of years you're doing a lot of free shows, yeah. you're just trying to learn, and then all of a sudden I was getting paychecks for it. And I thought, paychecks. I wonder if I could do this in other <laughs> states and and sort of get paychecks from other people. So, oh my gosh! Do yeah. you remember like your first big splurge once that money started coming in? Oh, no. a guitar. Yeah, because you know, you know, I was on the road and I, and I realized my hobby just became my job. I had just started doing comedy full time and I was I walked by a pawn shop and I thought I need another hobby. So I, I bought a guitar. <laughs> it was a big deal for me. So That's I awesome. feel like traveling, it has to be different doing comedy state to state. What are some of the kind of wildest differences that you've noticed? Well, the, it's not so much a difference. The, the fact is, like, people laugh at the same things, right? We're all about, you know, embarrassment, anger, mm -hmm. joy. You know, the, the emotions of comedy are all kind of the same. The trick is trying to figure out how those things are accessed through other places, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so, so it is different in just tiny details, but it's very similar in the fact that we all feel the same things we laugh at. Mm -hmm. I think that's so interesting, too. Well, what would you say has been, like, your favorite decade of life so far? My favorite decade, my, my favorite decade of life was the 40s because that's when you just, you realize I don't care anymore. I'm not trying to impress anybody. You're yeah. just, yeah. you're walking around in cargo shorts and dress socks, you know, <laughs> with, with, with sandals. Like, you're, just, you're, just, you're not trying to pretend anymore. Yeah. You know, you just, you put on the good sweatpants to head to Fred Meyer. You know, you know yeah. like, you're, you're just Do you think pay. it's been your most comfortable moment in comedy as well then? Yes. Yes, because uh, for a long time, you know, you, you're trying to figure out what the industry wants from you or what the audience wants from you, and then you start to realize that the best things about me are what I feel, the things that, the things that are about my life. Mm -hmm. And when you see people laughing and nodding, you go, okay, that's it. That's what I'm. That's what I'm going for now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so so that time in my 40s when I just started saying, this is what I want to talk about. And, and I mean, I was doing that before, but I really just went that way in my, in my 40s. I you know? almost feel like the pandemic and people being at home and like when you talk about going places in like your sweatpants and like socks and sandals, <laughs> and like I started doing that very comfortably yes. during the <laughs> pandemic and yes. I never really stopped it. I'm not 40 yet. So yeah. I feel like it almost like all accelerated us to that comfort level. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Beautiful. Absolutely. After, after, the, after the lockdown, uh, me and Pants had a very tenuous relationship. <laughs> yeah. I, I had it like put on a belt in, in months, you know. <laughs> 
I yeah. totally understand. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Where do you feel like you get inspiration from nowadays? Um, most of what I write is about my life, so if it happens to me, I react to mm -hmm. it. Just because as I started to develop comedy, I realized the stuff I worked hardest on were the things about me. I'm not a good observational comic. Mm -hmm. I can't take a mug and start talking or writing mug jokes. <laughs> uh -huh. you know? uh -huh. um, and, uh, and I realized the things I really worked hard on were like, oh, this happened to me, and I, I kind of want to express that. You know? I love it. And as somebody who has had such a successful comedy career, what is your advice to young comics today? Um, my, it's, it's what all comics say basically, stage time and writing are the two things. You, 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 can't, you can't get better without going on stage, so you just have to take every gig that, that is, is offered to you and, uh, and just try and get on stage as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, I once did, I once did a, um, uh, uh, the, between periods of the hockey game at Tacoma. Oh my gosh! It was, it was really tricky. Like, <laughs> I'm standing on the ice. <laughs> I can't hear if people are laughing or not because they're all so far away. <laughs> a lot of people are heading out to the concessions and I'm trying to do comedy to 360 degrees worth of people. And it was so difficult, but I'm glad I did things like that. Yeah. They just make you better. Definitely. And they make you appreciate audiences where they're all sitting facing you. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. And they're close by. Practice, practice, yeah. story. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, thanks for coming in, Kermit. Thanks for having this me. This has I been awesome. And, yeah. And yeah, big show tonight at Tacoma Comedy Club. And uh, and uh, the way I figure it, if you are, if you are right now at, at 1140, uh, still making your Valentine plans, then comedy is for you. Yes. <laughs> you and your partner are in the laughter. You gotta, yes. <laughs> you gotta laugh. Yes, again, doors open tonight at 6.30 for a 7.30 show. We have all that info for you on the tickets up at fox13seattle.com slash studio 13 live. Thanks again. Yeah, Thanks come see us me. again. Appreciate it. <laughs> all right, coming up next, it is the debut of Pop Quiz.